Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bear's Windy Homestead in the Desert. It's been windy, windy, windy every day. Well, actually, it starts about this time of day. Uh, it's, it's normally pretty calm through the first part of the day, but then it picks up about this time. And sometimes it goes all the way through the night, other times only about halfway through the night. And I count on it as uh, desert air conditioning to blow through the windows in my bedroom at night. And when it stops, it suddenly starts getting warm in there. So uh, I only sleep with one little blanket on me. And uh, usually that's just up to my waist because it's not that cold out. But uh, sometimes it just gets too hot. I have to get up and turn the ceiling fan on. But... I got plenty of power, so there's no worry about that. Now, I've been having some questions lately about power and situation. N number one, I've got my system running on a Midnight Classic 150. This is not a good idea for lithium iron phosphate batteries. You can set the up parameters on this to adjust to LiPo 4, but it's not designed. This is a Midnight Classic 150. The specs on a 150 is, 150 means it will handle up to 150 volts of input plus your battery bank voltage. So if you've got a 12 volt battery bank, that would be 12 plus 150 or 162 volts input. If you have a 24, then you would have 174 volts available input, <clears throat> and so forth and so on. Now, the thing with that is, <coughs> these are only designed, and I don't care what your, your thoughts are and how you think you're going to get by it. These, this 150 is designed so it was supposed to max out a 1,000 watt input on your solar panels, all right? So 1,000 watts is the most solar you can put in. Now, for four big batteries like this in LiPo 4, you want to have a minimum of 1,200 um, watts of input solar. That's a minimum. Well. You can't get that with this and if you try to get that with this you're going to have problems lots of problems you could end up ruining the midnight it won't carry that so you've got to come up with a better idea that's why i've been pushing the idea of all-in-ones the all-in-ones are designed to handle the extra power that's in these lipo 4 batteries is you got to th remember these are running on 200 amp BMSs, okay? So there's a capability of 200 amps going through these things. And I got one watt cable on here, so it'll handle most of that. But this will not handle the input required to maintain those batteries. So what happens is. The, the most amps you can put through this thing is 90 amps. That's, that's the max on you, you can do on your user settings is 90 amps. Well, you're going to get need more than that on your solar coming in, and that's going to cause a problem. Plus, your batteries are already 200 amp BMSs, so 90 amps coming through this thing is not going to be enough. It just won't work. Now you can probably do it with a smaller system. If I if I got rid of two of these batteries, I'm on a 12 volt system, and these are all in parallel. So if I got rid of two of these batteries and went on with two of them, I'd have no problems running it with a, a Midnight Classic 150. But when I get to four batteries and five batteries, there's a difference. Now in uh, other voltages other than 12 volts. 
and you're running them in series to upgrade your, your voltages. These are all 12 volt batteries, so if you put four in series, you're going to have 48 volts. You can't just add one to it because you don't have 48 volts there. And if you add one in series to four, you're no longer at 48 volts. You're way over it. So you can't do it that way. But in parallel, you can connect more than four in parallel. Matter of fact, most of the, the LiPo 4 batteries will let you go up to 16 in parallel. But there's a problem. If you're going to go with that many 12 volt batteries in parallel, you're not going to find even an all-in-one that will handle that power because they don't make them. Okay? When you get up to the um, this inverter is a 12 volt to 240 volts AC. It's a split phase. So it will do 12 volt to, to 240 volts. Split phase. Okay? This will handle what I've got going here. But it's not the best situation because that won't handle those even though those will be handled by this. I can, and that won't handle the solar coming in even though the solar coming in is what I need for these. Okay? So this is a maximum 1,000 watts input of solar. Now I've got this one taken in. Um, I think I've got it set for 1,170 watts. That's 170 watts over. And I was betting on never getting the perfect conditions to put up to produce 1,170 watts. Although I have seen it on here. So when it does that, what happens is this unit goes into protective mode and shuts down and on here instead of seeing bulk or MPPT or anything like that it's going to say resting and all of these other numbers will be zero it'll have zero volts coming in zero watts zero volts at the battery I'm sorry the battery will still show the same but it'll show zero, zero, and zero on the amps coming in. That's because this thing shut down to protect itself and the system. Now, to fix that, you have to come out and you have to have a switch in line to shut off the power to your inverter. So I shut it, shut it off here just for a few seconds, then turn it back on again, and then this whole system has to reset. And when it resets, it says that I have to enter the time and date and all of that stuff all over again. So it's not a good way to go because during the day I have so much solar coming in that if I don't burn some of it off, and I think you've seen some other videos of mine where I say I've got more power than I need. Well, it's not really more power than I need. I, I, lo I love all the extra power. It's more power than this unit will handle. All right? So I need to get an all-in-one in here. And I think an 8K, which is 8,000 watts, will be plenty for my needs for the rest of my life. Now, some people went with the 10Ks on my suggestion, and that's because a 10K is for a larger house. Now, I am planning or... I, I'm still planning on building a guest cabin here and powering it off of this whole system. But that guest cabin is not going to have to be powered every day like my cabin is. So I'm running now on a 4K unit. So if I jump up to an 8K, I'm doubling it. So I can run on this unit right here without a problem from my cabin and my uses in the shop and all of that. So I can double that and I'll be fine with with a guest cabin. 10K, of course, would be the best, but 8K will suffice for me. And because I'm so poor, even the 8K is out of my budget range 
And if I have to buy one, I'm going to go downhill in debt. That's not where I want to go. I'm trying to pay off debt so I can live more comfortably. And I'm not going to go into why I'm in this position, but let's just say um, I'm getting a screwing for a screwing I got. Right? That might explain it. So anyway, getting away from that topic, um, yes, I need an all-in-one here, and I think an 8K would be exactly what I want. And with the 8K, I won't need any of this other stuff here. I'll be fine running on the 8K. Now, I do have that one battery right now is running on that rover. And that's designed for life pulse, uh, 4. And that maintains that battery perfectly. And all that battery does, that one 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery, all that does is it runs light lighting in the cabin. That's it. And they're all LED lights. So I can leave all the lights on 24-7. And that battery will never see 50%. Never. If it gets below 85%, I'm, I'm concerned. Because something else is wrong. But yeah, that's lighting only. And in the future, I hope to be able to have some time. I already wired the lighting in 14-gauge... Uh, Romex, so they're all ready to be switched over to AC power. So I could get rid of that battery and switch everything on the lighting over to my 8K all-in-one, so everything is 120 volts in the cabin. Very simple, few wire switching here and there, a couple of connections, and I'm off. I'm done. Okay, so that's my plan in the future, and that's what I want to do. Of course, finances are holding me back. And I was just telling my friend today, I just had to go buy more dog food today. Sherry, the secretary, thank you so much for all the help you give me with sending me dog food. I couldn't make it without you. But uh, the one bag a month is uh, it's supplemental for what I'm doing with all of these dogs. I got a dozen dogs out here, and they're all growing up and getting bigger, and they're getting bigger appetites as they go. And they no longer take off for days at a time. They hang around here to get their two free meals a day. <laughs> two hots and a cot. <laughs> you like that one, Tony? I thought you would. Anyway, that's about it. So I just wanted to cover that information for you guys. If there's any questions out there on um, solar and what you should do and what you're going to need for your system, let me know. Now, for those of you first starting out and you're using the links that I've given for uh, discounts on Watt Cycle batteries and Watt Cycle equipment, and it works for everything on their site, not just batteries. So you can get discounts using my code on everything that they sell. So use that, and that's fine. But remember, you also have to have a 12 volt lithium iron iron phosphate battery charger for the initial charge of all your batteries okay now if you're using 12 volts you need a 12 volt 20 amp charger and it's going to take a few hours probably three to five hours to charge a battery like that and you've got to have electricity to run that um, charger to do that so you're going to need a generator and I'm not going to say I totally recommend you get a Predator from Harbor Freight, but for price and um, efficiency and durability, this one's been here for now for 10 years. And it still starts with a single pull of the rope every single time. Now, you can get them with electric start if you're um, females that are going out there and you don't have uh, big strong bodies to pull start these things it doesn't take that much but you know as you get older things like that get to be a little bit more of a chore but in the meantime you can get them with electric start so if you like to do that just remember you're going to need a 
lead acid battery that you're going to have to use for a starter on it and you're going to have to maintain the battery. Okay. Now, they do make starter batteries now in LifePo 4 and WattCycle does have them. And it's called the Ultra. So if you're going to get one of those, just remember that there's got to be a way of charging that battery because the generator itself doesn't usually charge the batteries. All it does is let the battery start the engine and then the, the um, generator powers your electricity for your house or your cabin. But it doesn't recharge the battery. So make sure if you're going to buy one that you get one that does have a a built-in charger for the battery so it's going to have to have a 12 volt charger built into it um, like your car engine does so it recharges your starter battery after you start, start the engine all day long all important stuff that you have to know if you're moving off grid for any questions and comments leave them down below I'll be glad to get back to you and answer your questions for you and anybody who's been with me a long time will tell you I don't ignore my followers. So subscribe, give me a thumbs up as uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff Williams says, smack it hard. <laughs> I love you, Jeff. You got a good show. Anyway, uh, yes, um, leave your comments below. Though Everybody that knows me, everybody has been with me for a bunch of years will let you know that I don't ignore my followers. Give me a question, I get back to you real quick. This is G-Bear, thanking you all for joining me and signing off.